Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to source, go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. If you want to get yourself off your meds or get a loved one off their meds and you want to be uh, replace or replace the medication with a good nutritional supplement program. 844-236-6010 is our number. We can help you do that. If you have questions about the longevity products or the truth treatment products or a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, or if you want to sign up to join the bright side Ben team and start yourself a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, right off your home office, or if you so desire, just get your products at the wholesale price. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business. If you're an entrepreneur, it's an ideal way to start a business. Business in a box, basically, for a small fee. For a $25 fee, you can just get products and at the wholesale price and resell them retail. Or if you just want to get your own products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, Call 866-735-2470 or sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, perfect for dealing with dark spots or fine lines and wrinkles, wonderful anti-aging. Do you know retinol is also anti-cancer, anti-pre-cancer, and it's even used as uh, chemotherapy for certain forms of cancer. Vitamin A is a remarkable vitamin. It's an intelligent vitamin. Vitamin A knows whether a cell is growing too fast or too slow, dividing and doing its business at a, a, a pace that's too rapid or not rapid enough. And vitamin A normalizes the rate of growth. That's why vitamin A is anti-cancer. It'll slow down the growth of, of cancer. And it is also anti-aging. It will speed up the activities of a cell depending on what needs to happen. That's the intelligence. The intelligence of the divine force as it manifests through vitamins, through trace nutrients through all kinds of natural compounds. Yet we seem obsessed with this drug, crazy drug model, this crazy, crazy, crazy pharmacomedical model that will be looked upon 100 years from now or 200 years from now will be looked upon the way we look at, at uh, middle-age middle medicine where they used to bleed you to get you better or where they used to, uh, 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 I don't even know what they did, they used to blame illness on little elves that shot arrows at you, literally. This was the, this was the known cause of disease in the, in the dark ages, the, the low middle ages, I guess, up, up until the Enlightenment, or up until uh, maybe 1200 AD. It was known that disease was caused by little elves that shot arrows at you. Today we know that it's germs, or we know it's, gen we know it's genetics, or we know it's viruses. And this, gets us, this brings us to what we were talking about yesterday. We talked yesterday about how melatonin, one of the all-time great vitamin slash hormones. It is a vitamin slash, well, there are researchers who believe it's like a vitamin. They call it a vitamin and a hormone. At least it has some vitamin-like effects. It's non-toxic, basically, pretty much. I, I mean, I, I don't know of any toxicity associated with melatonin. 
And it has been used, everybody knows it's used for sleep, but it has been used very effectively, and it is being used very effectively by HIP practitioners and, and patients to treat digestive health issues because melatonin is mostly a digestive hormone. Most people don't know that. You know that because we've, we've been talking about it now for a week or so. Most people don't know. Melatonin is mostly a digestive hormone, at least in terms of its concentration. There's more, way more found in the digestive system than is found in the pineal gland. It can help you with heartburn. It can help you with gastroesophageal reflux disease. And it can help you with ulcers, too. Ulcers are a fascinating subject. I remember when uh, I graduated pharmacy school in 1986, hard to believe, and I went out to work in drugstores, the best-selling drugs, the biggest-selling drugs were Zantac and Tagamet. And I counted out, I can't even, I remember every day I would count out probably 20 or 30 prescriptions for Zantac or Tagamet, 100, cap, 100 tablets, and uh, they would go for about, this is 1986, they're probably going for about 70 or 80 bucks for 100, which was pretty darn expensive for back then. And then all of a sudden, nobody's buying Zantac and Tagamet anymore. And Zantac and Tagamet have, uh, have fallen off the list. Basically, today, you don't even really hear too much about Zantac and Tagamet. Because as it turns out, it isn't an excess of acid that causes ulcers. Zantac and Tagamet are antacids. They're high-tech antacids, if you've ever heard of those drugs. Cimetidine is, uh, is the name for Tagamet. That, they probably call it Cimetidine now. That's the generic name. And then uh, Ranitidine, that's the generic name, name for Zantac. Tagamet was old school, and then Zantac came out. And Zantac was kicking, kicking uh, Tagamet's butt. We were selling so much Zantac. I actually went and applied for a job with Glaxo, which was the company at the time that was making Zantac, because we were selling so much of it, I figured I might as well be a salesman. And they told me that I didn't want to be a salesman, and they were right. I didn't want to be a drug salesman. But I actually did apply to get a job at Glaxo because uh, I saw how much Zantac we were selling. Anyway, you don't hear too much about Zantac and Tagamet today because today we know it's not acid, too much acid that causes, um, that causes ulcers. It's this bacteria that's called H. pylori, which many of you have probably heard of. H. pylori, by the way, has also been associated with uh, infections of H. pylori. It's been associated with rosacea. The story of how H. pylori got, finally got the credit for being the cause of ulcers rather than acid is a really interesting story. It's a textbook case in what's wrong with the medical model, what's wrong with really the scientific model in general. Thomas Kuhn, uh, the author of The Structure of Scientific Revolution, said, science progresses funeral by funeral, meaning the old guard had to die out before new ideas could take place. New ideas are never welcomed in the mainstream. Ar Ar Arthur Schopenhauer, famous philosopher from the 1800s, 1700s actually, he, uh, he said that new ideas are first laughed at, then they're violently opposed, and then they're finally accepted. And that's the, that's the pattern of new ideas. That was the pattern of new ideas in 1700. It's still the pattern of new ideas today. And nothing exemplifies this more than the story of how we, uh, H. pylori came to get the credit for being the cause of ulcers. Throughout history, there have been various ways to treat ulcers. By the way, ulcers, the term ulcers, it's kind of a generic catch-all catch phrase. The technical term for ulcers is peptic ulcers. A peptic ulcer is an ulcer of the digestive tract, from the esophagus to the intestine. There's, basically, there's three kinds of ulcers. There are three kinds of peptic ulcers, three kinds of digestive tract ulcers. You've got one, uh, an ulceration that can occur, and an ulceration is a wound. An ulcera uh, ulceration is like a little pit that forms, a little uh, a damaged tissue, an erosion of tissue. So there's three types of these ulcers. You've got the ones that occur in the esophagus, esophageal ulcers. Then you have, uh, and, and uh, Barrett's esophagus is one of the worst of these, and it can be super deadly, esophageal cancer, esophageal ulcers. Uh, esophageal cancers, which can come from esophageal ulcers. Then you have stomach ulcers, and then you have intestinal or duodenal ulcers that occur in the upper part of the intestine. That's where you have your three basic uh, digestive tract or peptic ulcers. You can tell you have an ulcer if you have pain right around two to four hours after you eat a meal, if you start to get this really terrible burning pain. That's the acid hitting the, hitting the, the wound. Not good. Hydrochloric acid and <laughs> you can just imagine, right? Hydrochloric acid and wounded tissue. Not good. And it doesn't feel good. Interestingly, duodenal ulcers can be relieved by eating more food. Kind of shuts off, shuts off the acid production at that level. And then uh, uh, gastric and esophageal ulcers, they're made worse by 
eating food. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. My pharmacist, Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm pharmacist, Ben. That line's open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If, if you have questions about anything we're speaking about, speaking about here today, melatonin, serotonin, Ulcers, if you're dealing with a stomach ulcer, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, how nutrition has helped you. If, if you had a stomach ulcer, if you, if you had any other health challenge, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Please check out our Longevity products and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. All the Longevity products are up. There's also a join, now, uh, join the team now link that you can hit a button that you can press to get on uh, the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and earn all the benefits associated with having your, all the tax benefits associated with having your own business and help spread the word about the power and the importance of a good nutritional supplement program. So, back to our story about ulcers. It was, uh, when I graduated pharmacy school in the 80s, it was well known that it was uh, acid and stress that caused too much ulcers. Up until, uh, up until uh, oh, maybe uh, in the 1970s, they didn't even use drugs, they used surgery. Up until the 1960s or so, it was basically a surgical solution. The only solution for ulcers were surgical. In the 1920s, they used to pump milk through your nose. That was the, that was the doctor logic to neutralize the acid. I guess, I guess that would work, I don't know. They put it, literally, they would pump milk up your nose. To get into, I don't know why they would do it up your nose. Actually, not up your nose. They would put, they would put it. They, there's no way they would put it up your nose. They put it up. They they put it in a, in a uh, pump. They pumped acid or milk right on the acid to neutralize the acid. Anyway, a guy named Dr. Marshall, Dr. Barry Marshall. He was in medical school in the 1970s, and he was doing some experiments, and he came up with, he he made a, a very startling discovery. He realized that ulcers were not caused by stress, they were caused by a bacteria. Actually, he noticed that this bacteria called H. pylori was always present when there were ulcers. And he, he, got, he, he tried to tell people about this, and nobody would listen to him. Doctors would not listen to this guy, Dr. Marshall in Australia. It's a famous story. Barry Marshall, he tried to get all the doctors in, in his town, I think he was in Perth, wherever he was in Australia. And he tried to get doctors to understand, he tried to publish papers, nope, nobody would listen to him, they laughed at him. Until finally he got so frustrated that he actually made himself an H. pylori smoothie. He literally took H. pylori bacteria and put it in some kind of beverage or smoothie and drank it. He drank H. pylori, gave himself an ulcer to prove to science that H. pylori was the cause of ulcer. Long story short, he started doing, he started, he wrote, he published a paper about it and just started doing studies uh, with patients with another guy named Dr. Warren and uh, they ended up winning the Nobel Prize in medicine in 2005 for their discovery that it was H. pylori. This bacteria, H. pylori, that was responsible for ulcers, not acid, to the point today where you don't even really hear much about ulcers because they just give you antibiotics, kills the H. pylori. Now, is that a great solution? Um, well, I don't know, if you have an ulcer, maybe. But, of course, we know what antibiotics do to the digestive system. This is a classic example of the craziness of the medical model. Nothing will whack out your digestive system faster and more effectively than an antibiotic. Everybody knows that. Every normal layperson knows that, but we've allowed the medical model to just kind of brush that aside. So they give you antibiotics and, uh, you know, kills the, uh, kills the, uh, the H. pylori and you don't have an ulcer. And in fairness, there's not really a lot of ulcers, or not as much. It's a relatively rare diagnosis these days, a relatively rare uh, pathology. Medication is one of the leading causes of ulcers today, not H. pylori, because of antibiotics. Anyway, so uh, H. pylori, as it turns out, like all bacteria in the body, uh, is important. H. pylori plays a role in good health. H. pylori may help you fight stomach cancer. And by the way, H. pylori does not like acid. It lives in a low acid environment. So stomach acid itself may, number one, be the way you want to prevent an H. pylori infection using your, using your ultimate enzymes and your nightly essence, both of which can help, and apple cider vinegar, all of which can help with uh, acidity, stimulating acid production before meals by 
uh, using bitters, bitter substances, bitter vegetables, Swedish bitters and such. These will all stimulate acid production. Thinking about your food will stimulate acid production. You want acid. You need stomach acid. Stomach acid is good for you. Stom stomach acid is necessary. It's required not just for eradicating H. pylori, which cannot live in stomach acid, but uh, for helping you uh, absorb your minerals and your vitamins, for helping process, for helping activate enzymes. Acid's good stuff. It's important. And acid's not good stuff. Very bad for health. And on top of all that, it may be that the increase in stomach acid that's associated with H. pylori may be the body attempting to get rid of the H. pylori. It may be the excess stomach acid may actually be uh, uh, one of the body's adjustment mechanisms. The body is always adjusting. That's the thing about disease. It's th what we call diseases and symptoms are the body adjusting. What we call, what we call symptoms, the inflammation and the stomach acid and the, uh, the, uh, the rashes, the psoriasis, what we call symptoms could just be the body adjusting, could just be the body trying to take care of the problem. And then we go with the pharmacomedical model and we say, oh, we know better than you, body. We'll just cut this thing out or we'll just drug this thing or we'll just electrocute this thing. And the story of, this, uh, of the relationship between H. pylori to disease is like a poster child. It's like an icon, icon for what's wrong with the pharmacomedical model. If you have an ulcer and you take antibiotics and it goes away, well, nobody can argue that that's not a good thing. However, what you want to make sure you're doing is taking care of your digestive system in the first place. And if you do have an ulcer and you need antibiotics, make an extra sure you take care of your, uh, your um, digestive, di digestive system using nutrition and dietary strategies afterwards. So... H. pylori, if you, if, if you have any issues with GERD or H. pylori, there's lots of things that you can do uh, in a non-medical non fashion. For one thing, probiotics, good bacteria, can help balance out bad bacteria. So that's the first thing you want to do, is get yourself on the nightly essence. Start eating fermented foods, fermented vegetables especially. Fermented vegetables do all kinds of, they don't just give you the bacteria, fermented vegetables. Fermented vegetables give you broken down nutrients in the vegetables from the bacteria. Bacteria process nutrients in the vegetables, so they make the, the nutrients more accessible to the body. So it, when you're eating fermented food, yeah, you can do kefir and yogurt. Those are fermented for sure. But fermented veggies, that's the best, in my opinion. And also just in general veggies. We don't often think of vegetables as being important for the digestive system, but they are. In fact, that may be where they exert their most positive benefits <clears throat> is on the digestive tract if you're healthy. If you're not healthy, you may have a problem processing veggies, but you can always grind them up and make juices, make uh, not just juices, but make smoothies. A juice has all the water without the fiber. And juices are okay if they're fresh, and you're going to get some good stuff in there, and they don't have a lot of sugar in them. But the best kind of juice is more like a smoothie with a Vitamix because you keep the fiber. And the fiber rocks for the digestive system. The fiber is unbelievably important for the digestive system. And when there's bacteria in the fiber, the body can process the fiber and release really important sugars and sub other substances from the fiber. So you always want to mix your probiotics with your veggies and, or do fermented veggies. The combination of these bacteria and the veggies potentizes an already very potent food, which is vegetables. It potentizes them, makes them stronger, especially for the digestive system. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number on Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on BenFuchsArchive.com and BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com. We have search engines on all the websites, as well as the longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com, and a Join the Team link that you can click for a one-time $25 fee. You can join the BrightSide Ben team and start yourself a longevity business and get your products at the wholesale price. You can call 866-735-2470 if you want to speak to a real live person or just hit the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so our number 844-236-6010. 
And we have lines open. We'll get to you here in just a moment. From Vanderbilt University, Vanderbilt University Medical Center, published in uh, this week in the journal Nature Medicine. For the first time, researchers have figured out a way to starve cancer. Quote, researchers at Vanderbilt University have demonstra demonstrated for the first time that it is possible to starve a tumor and stop its growth with a newly discovered small compound that blocks the uptake of glutamine. This is so interesting. Every once in a while, I'll hear somebody tell me about the problem with this wonderful amino acid, glutamine. Usually it's a medical doctor. There's one in particular, I won't mention his name, and he thinks glutamine... It, it, he has, he has a problem with glutamine because he says it feeds cancer, which of course it does, because everything feeds cancer, because cancer is a monster that eats everything. Glutamine is, is very important for growth. So he, this doctor's logic is you shouldn't use glutamine because it feeds cancer cells. Well, that is the stupidest thing I've heard in the, in the world of nutrition, or at least it's tied for the stupidest thing, because I've heard a lot of stupid things. The body needs glutamine. You don't rob the body of an incredibly important nutrient, incredibly important amino acid, unbelievably important for the immune system to fight cancer, as well as the digestive system, for zillions of reasons. Glutamine is, you know, we haven't talked about that in a while, maybe we should. It's one of the all-time great amino acids for many, many reasons. Does, does it feed cancer? Yeah, it feeds cancer, because everything feeds cancer. Does it stimulate cancer's growth? Well, if you have cancer cells, maybe, but the answer is not to stop the glutamine. It's to figure out why your body's so freaked out, why your cells are freaked out that they've turned cancerous, and then to eliminate that. Not to rob your body of a critical, vital, important nutrient, in my humble opinion. Anyway, that's the strategy that doctors like to use. And so now they've come up with a protein that will actually block the ability of a cancer cell to use glutamine. Whatever. That's not what cancer is about, people. Cancer is about a body-slash-cell system and I'll just say cell, because all cancer is cell cancer, that is stressed out. And by the way, skin cancer is not a skin disease. It's cancer. Or it's not a skin issue. It's cancer. It's a cancerous cell. I got a letter. The reason I bring that up is I got a letter today from a lady who was chastising me about, actually she wrote on a YouTube video I did, who was chastising me for saying dermatology is a failed science. She said, well, my dermatologist took care of my skin cancer, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Your skin cancer is a, was caused by an issue with your body, something that you did to your body. And now, I'm not beating anybody up here, by the way. I'm not blaming the victim. But cancer, a cell turns cancerous when it is completely at its wit's end and doesn't know what to do. And skin cancer is no different from liver cancer in that way because skin cell cancer and liver cell cancer are both caused by a burden on the cell. What is it that causes the burden on the cell? Well... There's only three things. Remember, there's only three things that go wrong in a cell. Nutrition, uh, starvation, suffocation, and toxification. How do you handle it? With nutrition to handle the starvation, with oxygenation and movement to uh, handle the suffocation, and to make sure the body has a clean and cells have a clean place to do their business. And you know what? Even if you have cancer and you do those things, you're going to feel better. I'm, I'm not sitting here to tell you that I'm going to cure cancer or these, these ideas are going to cure cancer because I'll end up in jail. And I don't even like the word cure because cure is about magic. This isn't magical. This is logical. Cure is magic. Reversal is logic. And what we're talking about here is logic. Out with the bad, in with the good, the body does the rest. Logic. Cure. Oh, we're going to cure cancer. The cure for cancer. We're going to spend the, have a war for cancer and find the cure for cancer. That's magic. We don't need magic. The body is exquisitely logical. So if you do have cancer, God forbid, and you follow this protocol, you're going to feel better. Whether you're magically cured, that, I can't say there's any magic that's going to happen, but you're going to feel better because the body will start to get healthier. And I can tell you this, reversals and re, uh, uh, remissions occur all the time. They are not rare. And even if they were, if they could happen in one person, if they could happen with one person, excuse me there, they could happen with one person, they could happen with anyone. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to Mike in Colorado, and uh, welcome Mike to the Bright Side. Good morning, Mike. Hi, Ben. How you doing? What's going on, buddy? I enjoy when you're on coast to coast. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Is that how you heard about the, this program? Yes, yes. Um, I've been diagnosed with branch venous occlusion in my left eye, so the upper part of the vision is kind of smoky. Mm. And the how old are you? 
How old I'm, are you? Uh, 71. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And the optometrist recommends I go to the VA to the vascular specialist. Oh, my gosh. Don't, you don't want to be in the VA. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you don't want to go. You know, Mike, you sound too, like too nice a guy to go to the VA. Yeah. I don't, I don't well, he would that. probably he'd probably recommend injecting Avastatin. Well, are you Av- a, uh, to, to stop cholesterol production, right? Are you a, a vet? Yes, I, I am. I mean, you're obviously a vet, but were you, in, were you overseas or anything? Um, no, I wasn't. Okay. So, uh, anyway... Uh, you have a, a vascular problem, not an eye problem. M- like we were saying earlier, how skin cancer is a cancer problem, not a skin problem. You have a circulatory problem. Your uh-huh. blood's clogging up. Your, your, your blood is getting, uh, your va- blood vessels are clogging up because your blood is getting sticky and dirty. What happens over time as the sticky and dirty blood, um, as the sticky and dirty blood f- circulate through the body, they initiate immune responses, defensive responses in the, skin, in the vessels. And the vessels then go through this whole inflammatory thing, and one of the byproducts is cholesterol. Does that make sense how I explain that? Because that really right. is an important point. Yes. This is a, because this is the leading cause of death. What I just described is basically how we die. I'm not saying that about you, but this is how the body, the leading cause of death are these injuries that take place to the blood vessels, the secondary inflammatory response, the tertiary cholesterol, and then the medical model addresses the cholesterol. When I'm saying we should be addressing the blood because the problem's in the blood. Now... Mm-hmm. How do you do, deal with it? Well, if you're 71, you know good and well you've had issues because this does not happen out of the blue. Now, they, they may have been subtle. You sound like you got a lot of life energy there, so I'm not saying you're a sickly guy in any way, because so they may have been subtle, but you've got to address it at that level. Now, if you're already into occlusion, you may want to do some... I don't know. If you're already into the da- where there's a problem, you don't want to go blind, right? So you right. may need some medical intervention at this point. And this is where medicine, by the way, excels, is after we've been mucking up the works for a long time, medicine can do certain things. And we've got to give credit where credit is due. And if it saves you from being blind, who cares? Who cares if you have an injection of, of a statin drug in there, right? But I'm saying that you want to maybe try some other alternatives. And I'm not going to tell you not to have the surgery, but these are other things you might do. Vasodilation, number one, with niacin. Use the ultimate niacin. Opens up blood vessels. It's also anti-cholesterol. Okay. Make, sure you're, make sure on all the B-complex, using lots and lots of the B-complex. Um, if I were you, I'd also be doing connective tissue. The, the, de- the defect that's causing the wounding is in the connective tissue. So connective tissue building strategies and then dietary strategies to keep the blood clean. I, but we got to take a break. So don't go away. I'll finish up real quick when we come back, okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, talking to Mike in Colorado. Where are you in Colorado, by the way? Longmont. Oh, nice. And we haven't met, you and I? Uh, no, I'd like to meet you sometime. Yeah, I do talks at Tom Chenault's place every once in a while. Do you know where that is, the longevity facility on 17th? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, Great. you should come You should come by. You should go uh, say hi, and uh, I do talks every once in a while, so you should kind of get good, good. I just got turned on to that place about six months ago. Oh, they do great work over there, and they have, uh, are, you, are you in the longevity business? Are you doing longevity? No, not yet. <laughs> well, you might want to check it out because it's right next to you, and they do all these inspirational talks and motivational kinds of things, and they teach, talk about sales and teach you about different life strategies, and it's just a really cool place. He's got a great library over there, and he's a cool guy. He's, a, he's an amazing man, actually, a really amazing man. So you, you might want to pop in there. They're there, I they will. They're, they're there pretty much every Saturday, I know. Great. All right, so, uh, okay, so occlusion. Now, uh, One more occlusion thing. He, he yeah. showed me um, my retina and the veins, and a vein starts out, and then one becomes thread-like across, and then there's a yeah, lump. That's, that's, that, they're branching out. That, they're basically trying to compensate for the occlusion, for the clogging. It's one of the strategies that the body uses. It actually can be counterproductive. as a whole other story. The point is, is that you want to treat this as a, a, a dirty blood problem. Your blood's dirty, basically. Now, at this point, your connective tissue is breaking down, too, so you want to start building connective tissue. But these are more long-term kinds of things. You know, if you already have that kind of, if there's, if there's that kind of uh, occlusion in the eye there, you don't want to go blind, and you may need medical intervention. So I want to be very clear about that. But for more long-term, you think vasodilation with the niacin, as I said, that means blood vessels opening up, helping blood vessels open up, uh, uh, helping the body process sugar, which is a main blood toxin, and avoiding sugar. You've got to be treating yourself like a diabetic, which you very likely have blood sugar problems. 
you're, you're disglycemic. I don't like the word diabetic. You're disglycemic. You have messed up blood sugar. So treating yourself that way with chromium, vanadium, the sweeties, laying off of sugar and bread and pasta, uh, improving your circulatory system by moving the body. This, these are all generic strategies that we all have to do because your breakdown is generic and it's behind all, all chronic health challenges or circulatory problems. Basically, you have a circulatory problem and it's the same for somebody who has arthritis or autoimmune diseases or, or, or really any health challenge is going to involve the circulatory system because while all diseases sell disease, all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood. Those are our mottos here on the bright side. All diseases sell disease, and all disease is preceded by dirty blood. And that itself is caused by digestive issues and toxicity. Mm -hmm. All right? So uh, I know that was fast. If you want more information, shoot, shoot me an email, and then uh, put your phone number in there, and I'll get hold of you. and hope I get to meet you one of these days. Okay. I've been trying to email you, but it won't, uh, won't take. I don't know what I'm Ben at KSCO.com. Try it again. Ben at KSCO.com. Yeah, give me some time to get back to you. Thank you so much, all Mike. Right. Take care, man. God bless. Thank you. All right, Lynn in New Jersey, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Hi. this is Ben. Hey, Lynn. Hi, um, I'm calling because um, I'm helping a lady. Um, she's in her uh, late 60s, um, and she said that um, she's had um, insufficient hormone production uh, her entire life. Um, mm. The doctors, of course, blame her pituitary gland. Um, and so... Um, she sent me her blood work, and it shows um, she has low cholesterol. And the one doctor said that her cholesterol is fine, and the other one actually said that it's on the high side. To That's all life. nonsense. It, it remi that you know, it's like no the three sense. blind men, three blind mice, three blind mice. You know, that's yeah, why I can I'm just like, picture it in my head. Says it's low. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. How is it? She, it doesn't matter. What? She needs to be sending her body signals it needs to grow. That's what's happening. Her body doesn't think it needs to grow. Now, she's 61. Yeah, well, or, you, her, her whole life, too. I know, so. her whole life, Nobody because nobody told her. They blamed her, they blamed her, her structure, her makeup, her composition, instead of blaming how she lived her life. I don't want to say blame. Instead of approaching it as a lifestyle issue, they approached it as a structural issue. She's got to send her body signals that it must grow. If the body does not have the signals to grow, it isn't going to grow. The body is very right. economical. It conserves all the time. Low cholesterol is a sign. Cholesterol is a growth substance, as we've said a zillion times in this program. Low cholesterol is a sign that the body is not growing or doesn't think it needs to grow. First of all, this is a lady who needs to get to the gym right away, today. Somehow send the body signals it needs to grow. Now, don't, don't overdo it the first day because she probably never, you know, hasn't done. I bet she has never worked out. She's definitely not an athlete or anything like that, right? No, uh, I'm... You know what? That's one question I haven't asked yeah, her. But she's no, probably no, not put her. Definitely not. She hasn't put uh, the sent the body signals that it must work. Get a rebounder. Have her jump up and down. She may want to start off, you know, start off slowly. She's got to send the body signals. Now it's not enough just to send the body signals. Okay, building mm -hmm. is a question of build of of stress, some kind some kind of strain on the system, in combination with rest. I call that extra rest because the rest is just as important as the strain, and then nutrition. So make sure she's working out a little bit, and then after she works out, she does her, all of her uh, mighty 90 essential nutrients, especially protein, especially the B-complex, essential fatty acids, good fat. Stay away from sugar if she's a sugar eater. She very likely is if she's a sugar eater uh, or a bread eater, that kind of thing, pasta eater, rice, potatoes, those kinds of foods. Stay away from those. Nothing that makes her blood sugar drop. She well, wants you know to. what? You'll love this. Yeah. Her, uh, her doctor told her to stay away from chicken, eggs, and dairy because they're undigestible and are high allergens for most people. Well, so that may be true. Her, that may be true, but that does not mean that she should not be eating protein. She's got to find a protein. I don't know. She may not be digesting her her meat. Meat's a little bit difficult to digest, and if she's at this, she's had pituitary problems and hormone problems. She's very likely not producing enough stomach acid. Or she's got low gut motility. Her her digestive tract's not moving correctly. Then there may be a point to that. Do smoothies, juices, break down the food, liquid protein like bone soup. That's one of the neat things about bone soup is it's liquid protein, so you don't have to do the digestive work. Hey, I got so many, a ton of calls here. That I, I wish I could give you more information. There's lots more I could tell you. But the main thing is, is you've got to put some stimulus into the body in conjunction with rest, extra rest, and a good nutritional supplement program, uh, building supplements. Pretend she's a bodybuilder. Make her into a bodybuilder. That's, that's the advice I'd have for you. All right, I got to okay. go, Lynn. Yeah? Oh. You, one more? Uh, I want one more thing for you. Okay. Um, she's on transdermal um, 
uh, estriol, esterone, progesterone, and tr- uh, you, testosterone cream. Were, were you trying to depress is, is me here? Dangerous? That's the worst thing they can give her. The worst. Because the body's not going to be able to process any of that stuff. It's just jacking up a system that doesn't want to be jacked up. Okay, so it's I would, okay for her to get off that diet. I, you know, I'm not going to tell her it's between her and her doctor what she does. If you go to a doctor, as much as I'm not a fan of doctors or Dr. Ring, I don't want to say individual Dr. Ring, I would never tell you if you're working with a doctor to do something unilaterally without him because you're going to him. You're paying him. Right. And I know I would be ticked off if I'm trying to take care of somebody and then somebody else comes along and tells them to do the opposite. I, I'd be ticked off. I wouldn't do that to, and I wouldn't do that to any other healthcare professional. I never do. But with her doctor, she should say exactly what I just said. You don't want to jack up a system that doesn't want to be jacked up artificially with pharmacological hormones. You're just playing with fire. You want to build the system and let the system stimulate itself with exercise, rest, and good nutrition. I, got, I want to get a couple okay. more calls in. God bless you, Lynn. All right. Let me get, see if we can get Jennifer real quick. Been holding on a while. Good morning, Jennifer. What's up? Hi, Dr. Brown. I'm so happy to talk to you. What's um, going on? I just have a quick question. Um, I've been on the birth control pills for over 10 years, and I just tried getting myself off of it about three months ago, and my Mm. acne just went absolutely crazy. So I unfortunately put myself back on it, and I've been hearing just too many different things from different dermatologists. There's no too many things. This is the one thing. It's awful. I can think of – there's a lot of deadly drugs out there, but you can – a case could be made that at least in the top two or three, if not the top – is the, is the birth control pill. It is a disaster. Now, for birth control, obviously it's convenient, so I'm not going to argue about the convenience, but if you're taking it for right. acne, there's a lot better ways to deal with your acne. You've got to figure out what's wrong with your hormone system. Your hormone system is screaming at you, and you're telling it to shut up. You follow me? Yes, I, I, t- so, I tried, getting, I tried t- uh, being off the birth control pill for three months, and yeah, my acne yeah, was just so because bad. Because you're, so at I this point, your, your hormones are so whacked out so why do you have the yes. acne, do you suppose? That's the question. So we got to talk about that, but we're just out of time. We can't do it. Get yourself on zinc as soon as okay. possible. High doses of the B vitamins, high throughout the day. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine throughout the day. One of the worst things the birth control pill does is it depletes your B vitamins, which are incredibly important for everything, including skin. B6 and B12? All of it. The entire okay. complex. The entire, and okay. that, that's why I like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It's liquid B complex based with a lot okay. of other things. Um, and then uh, you want to make sure that you've got working on your gut bacteria because estrogen is processed in the gut. The estrogen okay. they're giving you is a major toxic form of estrogen. It needs to be eliminated instantly or as soon as possible. And that's where the role of gut bacteria and the liver and the bile. And that might be where your problem was in the first place. And by taking care of all of these things, not only will you help purify your or clear, clear out toxic estrogen, but you may be helping the fundamental hormone problem that caused the problem in the first place. All right, I got to motivate, Jennifer. God bless you. Good luck with everything. Sorry if we left you on hold. I apologize. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, as well as blog posts and news stories. And then also please check out my truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.